Hello, and welcome back to All or Not According to Jack with your host, Jack Toledano. Uh, as you can see, I am back at my home studio after that miserable <laughs> recording last week, uh, you know, that, that I did of uh, my, my review of uh, Judas Priest's in Invincible Shield, where I was in my parents' living room and I didn't have very good audio. Uh, of course, my wife tells me after the fact, Oh, why don't you use your wireless Beats headphones? There's an idea. So I I ended up using it for uh for uh the show that uh, Jamie Laszlo runs for Pete Potter on Sea of Tranquility and uh, much better audio. Huh. Hindsight's twenty twenty. So as you can see, I have some special guests this evening. Uh, a lot of them. Uh, I'll start reading from uh, I guess my my left to right so we have john clauser uh from alabama he's uh has his own channel called uh, my music corner welcome john thank you jack pleasure to be here thank you next i have uh oh, oh he's also from my corner of the globe on the same island lives on the same island that i do david creton uh uh for creton classics welcome davy Thanks for having me back, Jack. Oh, always a pleasure. Uh, next, and uh, George has been on with me in the past, and uh, I recently had him on for uh, uh, metal, my top three metal uh, of the year 2015, I think it was. And uh, yep. George gave me a very nice boost in uh, in viewership, so I thank you so much for that, George. Uh, also, George, uh, he, he runs the... Uh, the, sh the once a month show on Sea of Tranquility called uh, uh, Jet uh, or Fusion Friday. Welcome, George. Thanks. Good to be here, Jack. Oh, thank you, George. And of course, last but not least, my good friend from Norway, uh, Mr. Ove Rendum, who appears a lot on uh, what is a rock fantasy, I believe you're on yep. almost every yep. week. Okay. So, well, and Ove does appear a lot on my show, so welcome back, Ove. And, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. So if you see on either side of my head, uh, I have two albums that we're going to talk about this evening. It's an album war. Uh, one that I did buy is uh, Invincible Shield, Judas Priest, uh, their most recent album that they released, ironically, the day I headed down to Florida. And John has, uh, looks like he has two versions. He has the Target version, and what was the other version? This is the one I got off, off Amazon. So oh. the cover the cover is a little uh, a little different than what you have. Oh, okay. Maybe that'll be a collector's edition. Who knows? Could be. Uh, and then, uh, and then, yeah. So then they, they gave me this, uh, at, I went to Atlantic Sound uh, to, to down in Daytona Beach to buy this, and they gave me this um, iron-on patch in addition to a couple of posters, which are still sitting in my suitcase that I haven't unpacked yet, so go figure. Uh, so the other album on this side, there you go, uh, KK's Priest, Sermons of the Sinner, uh, oh, uh, Sinner Rides Again, uh, I didn't buy the album, but I bought the ticket. I will be going to see them this Friday night in Sayreville, New Jersey. So come check me out if you can. Uh, okay, so at this time, we're going to start. And basically, the format's going to go. We're going to go round robin. Um, we're going to start with Mr. Clouser. And he's going to talk about both albums, uh, so favorite songs of both albums, and which one. He likes better, and at the end, we'll we'll give you that tally. Okay, I'm curious to see who wins. So, all right, take it away, John. Okay, uh, well, I feel like I still haven't had a lot of time to really get both of these in really well. I I I really only got started listening to KK just recently, and uh, just got get myself ready for for tonight. Um. So the so the thing about KK, man, I'll tell you that just it just uh, pummels you. It is just a absolutely intense and relentless album, with with a few 
slow spots here and there, but boy, it's just, it just like, it's like, it's, it, it, you could definitely tell it's probably like a jugulator era painkiller feel. It just, there's a lot of that, that real intense, just heavy riffing, heavy double bass, heavy everything. Yeah. Um, gosh. Um, uh, I mean, rippers just sound like a maniac on this thing. I mean, I hear him sounding a little like Udo at spots. I hear a little bit of Ravens, John Gallagher, Halford, uh, Dale Thompson from Bride for for anybody who really wants to go deep. Uh, I just hear him sounding like a bunch of different uh, singers here. But man, he just and he got the growl. He's got all kinds of different vocal techniques here. Um, what about his range? I mean, oh, I gosh, his range is amazing. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing range. Um, you know, KK and um KK and AJ Mills just ripping it up on guitar. Um, and Tom Newton on bass and Sean Elg on drums. Again, man, Sean just is a, a beast back there. Yeah. Um, golly, what songs are what songs have really stuck out to me? Um like one more shot of glory. I love that chorus. That just that, you know, that that intense warrior cry that Ripper's doing here. I think that just sounds really cool. Teaser. That's in the, that's in their set list. Okay. All right. Um, him 66 with that, uh, creepy spoken word intro thing was, that was pretty, pretty intense. Yeah. Um, and I kind of dug the last song too. Uh, I mean, all the songs here sounded really good. I don't know if there's much, how much really anything stood out here, but I kind of like wash away your, uh, wash away your sins. I thought that was a nice kind of a way to close out the album had some slow spots, but then it got intense. And then you have the fade out at the end. I thought that was a pretty strong album. Um, this, this monster invisible shield or invincible shield. Um, I've, we've kind of done a review on this or uh, first impressions on my, on my channel, my music order. And so I'm not, to I wasn't totally ready to give it a ranking yet, but I'm like, there's a lot of songs that I'm like really have gravitated towards. Um, again, why, how Rob Halford at, in his mid seventies still sounds this good is beyond my comprehension. <laughs> uh, that's the only thing I could say. Um, Kudos to Richie Faulkner. He, I think he's handling pretty much all of the guitar work pretty much here. Um, again, Scott's just tearing it up in the back. You get a, you, a, a good pummeling album. You get a lot of a lot of little bits of everything here. A lot of painkiller, maybe a little turbo with some of the guitar synths that comes in and creeps in here and now and then. Um, very thought provoking lyrics uh, by Rob. I thought there was some really really strong stuff here. Uh, songs that's been like really earworming with me uh, on this though would uh, Crown of Horns, um, As God Is My Witness, and I would say Panic Attack. Uh, those three songs really have been the ones that have been really sticking in my sticking in my head um, as far as the catchiness, just how good they sound, and again, just how great Rob sounds. And uh, so, uh, which one do I like better? I think the jury's still out a little bit. I still feel like I need to get, I think they're kind of both. I th I think Invincible Shield has the better songs. I think there's a lot of stuff on KK's that it, they're good, but it's, it's kind of one dimensional almost. It, it, it just, it just doesn't, it, there's not a whole lot of variance, but I still like it. I think it's a strong album. So, so I think right now I'm going to give the, I'm going to give the edge to Invincible Shield. Okay. That's one tally for Invincible Shield. Okay. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. Davey. Okay. I have some chart information. I have some chart information on each album. Okay, cool. First of all, KK's Priest, The Sinner Rides Again, is on an independent label. So he doesn't, his band, he and his band don't have the big push of a major label like Judas Priest do, who are on Columbia, Sony, Epic, whatever label you want. It's all under the Sony umbrella. But for KK's Priest, they didn't chart for this album in America. But in the UK, it hit number 12 on the indie charts and number five on the rock and metal albums chart. And the UK album downloads, it was number 26. 
Oh, okay. And this album comes two years after their last album. The thing I like about this record more than the Priest album, it's more concise. The Priest album is 53 minutes, and then you add the bonus tracks, it's almost 60, what, 62, 64. 63 minutes. 64. Mm-hmm. I right. So, that, yeah. so this coming in at 40 minutes, it's more concise. It's it's old yep. school. He's only like got nine DC. songs. Yeah. Like so I like DCCD, yeah. I like the brevity of it, that it doesn't like... It's almost a daunting task when you see 15, what is it, 15 songs on the priest? Yeah, 14 songs for the priest. Yeah. And here it's nine songs. It's a daunting task to listen to a new album multiple times. Yeah. That's over an hour. And it's just like John was saying, it takes a while to seep in. So I enjoyed the fact that this is, it's shorter, great guitar work. I mean, Ripper's vocals, that guy has some voice. From like John said, from the growls to the high piercing screams. The guy's a great singer. Personally, though, back in the day when he was with Priest, the two albums he was on, Jugulator and Demolition, Demolition never hit me at all. And Jugulator, I really like the last song, the t- I think nine minute track, Cathedral Spires, I yes. thought was a great song. Awesome song. But it was, yes. it was very, like John was saying, this album just pummels you. It's like being hit in the head with an anvil multiple times. Just the first four songs out of the gate, boom, 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 boom. And then there's a slight respite, like you said, when Hymn 66 comes up. But I'm not a big fan of spoken word on albums. And here you get it twice on the record. So I sort of deducted some points for that because that didn't thrill me, the spoken word. Just sing and that's just my little Oh, you would like Man of War. (laughs) And I'm not... I'm not uh, really a man of war guy, so I'm glad. <laughs> well, maybe I'll tackle them in the future. But with this album, I think, John, you hit it on the head exactly. Wash Away Your Sins is a great song. And I really like Strike of the Viper, the second song that he co-wrote with, uh, what's his oh, name? A.J. AJ Mills, the guitar song. player, who co-wrote two songs. Yeah, two which, and a half, oh, it's both two and half minutes. Two yeah. and a half minutes long. That's that a short song one. is great because it just comes in and out. And it's like, whoa, what the heck hmm. was that? Uh, but you're right. The two songs with that he that KK co-wrote with AJ Mills, "Strike of the Viper," "Wash Away Your Sins," those probably my two favorites. I also think that after the first four songs just pummel you, there's a bit of a lull, and then I like the second half of the album a lot. I think it's a strong second half, and usually bands front load their albums. And the more I've listened to it, the more I like it. So I think it'll grow on me eventually. Right uh yeah and uh just k if i could say something about kk yeah i don't want to bad mouth the guy but he just keeps going to the press I and mean, he's trying to promote his band but he's the one that left judas priest and yeah. to me it's almost a bit of sour grapes that yeah. he keeps bringing stuff up you know i was in the band they won't let me back in the band but i hate to say it but kk you're the one that left the band yeah and because you wrote the book and said some stuff that they didn't like they're not letting you back in. Yeah. Basically, Ian Hill said as much that basically the ship has sailed. You know, there's there's no way back now. Yeah. Right. Here's a reference you might like, Jack. Uh, two what? references. Okay. Because it's sort of like when Larry David on Curb Your Enthusiasm, he opens the Spite store. <laughs> I, and to use the other phrase, I use Larry David's movie that not many people saw, Sour Grapes in the 90s when he left the Seinfeld show. So to me, KK's got like the spite store by making this band to try to compete with Priest, but he has every right to do that. Oh, and I, yeah. I admire him for doing that because he's a musician. He's making records. I was a singer, but I never made an album. So more power to you, KK. Right. It's your right to do that. But I just think he sort of falls short compared to Judas Priest. Like John said, the Priest album has great variety and it touches on every era of the band. Right Now, because Priest have the major label push behind them, the record hit number two in the UK and it hit number 18 here in America on the Billboard charts. Okay. But it did chart higher on the Billboard US Top Hard Rock Albums. It hit number one. And on the US Top Rock Albums, it hit number four. Yeah. I so it comes right. sig- yeah. So it did better. Right. Mm-hmm then it's it sold more copies and there's more right. awareness of it 
because anyone who's got the brand name will always do better than someone that doesn't have it. But, like with Pink Pink Floyd compared to Roger Waters, right. Floyd yeah. sold more albums than Waters did solo. Here's a point though. KK and I noticed this. He sold out some shows on this on this brief tour he's doing in the states. I was very surprised. So he actually started in Florida while I was still in Florida, and he sold out a few of those shows. So, and, and granted, they're clubs, but still, I right. was very impressed that he still has an audience, and he's still there's people still hungry to see him and Ripper. So exactly. Yeah, but he's he's playing clubs like Ace Frehley's playing clubs, and Kiss was right. playing stadiums like Madison right. Square Garden, for example. Right. Yeah, so it's the same thing, you know. Uh, Waters could sell out bigger places, but right. usually, I mean, look at David Lee Roth when he left Van Halen, one great album, yeah. and then he started playing smaller places, and his album sales tanked. Oh yeah, yeah. Van Halen had the name, and Roth just fell by the wayside, so to speak. Yeah. So this is produced by Andy Sneap, their touring guitar player. Right. And it's the lineup that everyone knows in Priest. Cover art by Mark Wilkinson, who's worked with Iron Maiden, Marillion, Fish, who was the singer in Marillion. And he's a good artist. I really like the album artwork on the Priest. It's very eye-catching. And the KK's Priest album artwork is good, too. I just like the Priest better. I love on the Priest album the vocals, the riffs, the solos, the drums the songs and the arrangements. Now, granted, it did take Priest six years to do this album. The pandemic, I mean, hurt their time frame. Right. Let's be honest about that. They started it right before the pandemic started. So they were hurt by that because they're all in different parts of the globe. They couldn't work together. So that delayed the album, plus uh, Richie Faulkner's health issues. So they had a lot of stumbling blocks. But much like when they came out with Painkiller, that was a big comeback compared to Ram It Down and Turbo in terms of what the fans liked and didn't like. They loved Painkiller and the other albums, not so much. This album, I just think, is a great comeback after six years. And I just enjoy this album overall more than KK's Priest. And the songs I really like, because I'm going on a little long here, I would say Serpent and the King is one of the, probably the best hard song on here. And like John said, Crown of Horns is a great melodic song. That reminds me of Defenders of the Faith Era Priest. And I really fell in love with one of the bonus tracks. Fight of Your Life is good, but The Lodger, written by Bob Halligan Jr., I just keep going around my house, and my girlfriend will attest to this, singing the chorus to The Lodger. Uh, it's lodged in my head. Mm -hmm. And I just love that song. And there's really not a bad track, I would say, on the Priest album. And the more I listen to it, the more I like it. I think it's a great comeback. I liked Firepower, and I think this album's better. So my vote definitely goes to Judas Priest. Oh, and one last thing is that I just read, which I didn't know because I was wondering how much guitar Glenn Tipton actually played on this record. And I read that he did the solos to both Sons of Thunder and Vicious Circle, one of the bonus tracks. Okay. So that's some new information that I just saw. I hope it's true. And I'm glad that Glenn is actually able to play on the record. It's a good thing because yeah. he's battling Parkinson's and we all wish him the best and hope he gets better and he's able to occasionally tour with Priest. And it's great that he's still part of the writing team and yep. in the band. Yes, absolutely. That's, I think, his one of his best assets now is uh, that he can still come up with a good riff and, and write. So, yes. Okay. Thank you, Davey. Uh, before I go on to uh, Mr. Lamy, uh, funny story. So, Priest released on March 8th, and my wife and I were heading down to Florida, and we rented a uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and it had car play, and 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 I want so we stopped off in Myrtle Beach on Thursday, spent the night. Uh, Friday morning, we got in the car. We were going to head down. Uh, I officially was able to start listening to it on Spotify, uh, except for that goddamn CarPlay kept cutting in and cutting out. So I was frustrated. I ended up. I'm like, fuck this. I uh, we just put on the FM radio and listened to that for the seven hours down to you know, Northern Florida. So I, yeah, I know. So I, 
So I ended up uh, putting it on when everybody went to bed on Friday night, the 8th, and, and listening to it two times. So, yeah, so I can get it into my head. And on Saturday, there was an event at a uh, the local uh, Atlantic Sound store. Some of you may have seen my pictures on Facebook. Uh, you know, there were some giveaways. I actually, my father and I got the same T-shirt. My father's an 82-year-old guy that I got to wear a priest shirt just uh, ju just for kicks. So, you know, to get a laugh from my mom and my wife. So, mm -hmm. but it was really cool that, you know, that he got to hang out with me. And, uh, it, of course, he gravitated to any of the people that were um, were veterans. But uh, anytime they asked him a priest song, he's like, yeah, you got to. I got to defer you to my son. Nothing about it. So, but it was very cool. You know, for somebody that hate never liked metal. So, that's my story. Uh, George, what do you got, bud? Well, uh, everyone's been starting with the KK, so I'll start there also. Um, I think I probably like the same songs as everybody else. The opening stuff sons of the sentinel strike of the viper one more shot at glory to me that that's the hot shit um it's interesting to, to compare and contrast with the priest because we're going you can see they're going for a more streamlined more direct they're worried about being heavy more it's less less of a wide scope musically um i'm sure it's kk's intention to just kick your ass and he's not worried about being frilly or whatever i will say uh i think it's time to stop all the cute little references in the song titles and stuff and i agree stuff. yeah here, it, here. i mean come on i count to three <clears throat> yeah it's immature i mean get yeah. over it like like uh davy said you quit so yeah uh, being bitter doesn't make any sense to me but you know um I will admit, I, I don't know if I admitted it to myself really fully, but uh, I'm not the biggest Ripper fan. I did not like the priest albums with Ripper. He's got huge pipes. Everybody can hear that. But I don't necessarily love his tone a lot of the time. I, he he grates on me a little bit sometimes. Uh, obviously, he's a talented dude. But, uh, you know, if you're, we are comparing and contrasting with Judas Priest, he's no Rob Halford to me. I mean, Halford has a, a very nice tone that uh, is not going to go away, no matter he's 72 or whatever he is. The tone mm -hmm. never goes away. Maybe the power and stuff will will diminish, but he's always going to have that pleasant tone. But, you know, it is a good album. There's not a bad song on it. It's just a little, a little bit limiting for me. I can see that being a plus for some people, but for, for me, uh, it's a little bit of a minus. The Priest... You know what? I was not looking forward to this record. I not with the rest of the world. I didn't love Firepower. But uh this to me is everything that people said Firepower was. This is like vital. It feels fresh. The first three songs are bangers. Panic Attack, Serpent in the King, Invincible Shield. They mean business. So after those three songs, you know <laughs> they are not messing around. Uh, As God is my witness is another one. Uh, Trial by Fire, another video song that was really good. As the videos come out, were coming out for this album, I kept being like, another good one? Another good one? I was just like, man, this is going to be hot shit. And sure enough, um, for me, it's the best sense painkiller. So, I mean, that's big for me. Me personally, I like the Target tunes. Like Davey said, Fight for Your Life, that reminds me of... It's like a time capsule song from Hellbent for Leather. The riffing in there, I totally hear it. And I also agree with David, the Lodger is cool. It doesn't sound like Priest. Priest is not a band that often throws you a curveball. They stay in their lane. But this song, Bob Allegan composing, so maybe that's why, it's different for Priest and it, a good kind of different. So uh, in comparison-wise, I just... There's no single facet of the KK that I like as much as the thing on the Priest album. So I got to go Priest here. Okay. Wow. So we already have a winner. So, oops. <laughs> there you go. So 
you can see my fingers, three zero so far. <laughs> so thank you, George. Uh, Ove. Yeah. What do you have? Well, I got to be the different guy here then. I want to start with Judas. I have the vinyl I got, and it's not the blue one. It's not the other one, but it's oh, the hot oh, pink. Nice. Okay. Hot Ooh. pink one. Red. Uh, um, let's take a look at what, what's the spindle look like inside. Yeah, yeah. Pull it out. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. Ooh. Wow. And uh, so eightfold. Oh wow! Very nice. Was it expensive, Ove? Uh, about um, I should say about fifty bucks, maybe. Okay, because I saw forty five ninety nine at Atlantic Sounds, whereas I paid a measly thirteen dollars for it at the at the same record store down there. I really so, like this like this a lot better. I wish this was the front. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I have the same one. Yes. So for me, this Judas Priest album is the best since Defenders of the Faith. Oh, I really like. I'm, I'm not a big. I'm not a big Turbo fan. I'm not a big Ram It Down fan. I'm not a big Painkiller fan. Uh, I like. I like uh, Tim's albums. I have uh, actually met Tim and talked to him. A cool guy. I'm friends with him on Facebook, and he's a really down to earth guy. Tim who? Tim Ripper Owens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's really he's down to earth. He's like he talks. He is. He's like you and me. Like, yeah. Yeah. So he's a really nice guy. So, um, the U.S. Priest album, I really like it because it's it's like everybody said, it's got big variations and it's for me it got much more depth and high and low points uh, instead of firepower that's more like stay in the middle and just goes a little up and down this has got big kind of ups and downs like in tempo and and the sound is really good i really like the sound on this album uh, as for songs i like panic attack i remember first time i heard panic attack i was like is this a rush or is it u.s priest because it has that perfect rush start mm -hmm. i just like the mid eighties rush kind of power windows. Um Devil in Disguise, I really liked. I thought it was really cool track and it's cool lyrics and uh Scott Travis's drums kinda of, I know he feels like he is um more relaxed on this album. He likes he has like an open high at somewhere. He is kinda of like he breathes a little more like his drumming is much more, I guess, progressed forward instead of doing what he's known for with the power with the painkiller double beats and, and stuff. I feel like he is kind of like a little, more, a little more proggy drums than he, he has had before. Uh, and uh, of course, my favorite song is the title track. The guitar solo at the end there is, is just, it's, yeah. It's it's the real deal for me. Uh, as for KK, I'm a KK fan. I've always been a KK fan. I like his songs. I like I like his playing and stuff. And uh, and uh, and the sound on the new KK album, it's so good. I mean, the sound is so good. It's I can't explain it even because the sound is it. It sounds so good. It the guitars are like razor sharp, and it's. It's just, it goes straight through anything. Um, they have actually, it's like nine songs, I think, and, and five of those songs are music videos that are really cool. They have like a lot of singles from this album. And uh, for me, uh, it seems like we like the same songs because I like Wash Away Your, Your Sins and uh, Keeper of the Graves, I really like, and Helm 66. Is is my favorite. Uh, Conti, different from Davy, I really like the, the speaking part because it kind of sets the tone, it sets the mood, and it kind of takes you on a journey. And and uh, I really like that. He's like, like concert, his concerts that way too. With, oh, uh, sweet. With, 
with with some speaking, yeah, for like a minute or two, yeah, with very very deep uh, vocals and yeah, like Orson Welles. Worse, yeah, Orson Welles with, with the uh, with the record slowed down a little bit more. Yeah. Oh wow, I love him in Transformers movie in like eighty six. Yeah. It's just he speaks so well. So for me, it's uh, I of course choose KK Priest as my favorite of these because nice. I like like David said, I like the more straightforward stuff, the rougher stuff that's right. more on the edge, like of uh, racer's edge, I guess. Okay, that's cool. Well, thank you for that, Obe. So mm -hmm. four opinions so far. Uh, mine. Uh, so some of you and uh, to to my uh, audience at large i again i apologize for the audio of when i uh reviewed uh priest invisible shield but uh i will say that my opinion really hasn't changed uh the album i think is a bit uneven uh so basically in rating the album what i did was i rated every song from one to five now i'm not going to go through all my ratings but um i took an average of it and i uh if if you bought the 11 songs it was a 4.2 average 4.2 out of 5 which is which is good but mm -hmm. unfortunately it it was brought up by i would say three songs that were close to fives and then i had a couple songs that were below 4 like uh for me i'm not too i'm not too crazy about panic attack gates of hell crown of horns it just sounds a little too pretty and too clean for me. Uh, I love Serpent and the King. Uh, mm -hmm. Invincible Shield, uh, for me, is the best song on the album. And yep. As God is My Witness, also the best song on the album. So yeah, I think cool. those songs basically brought up my rating. Whereas KK's Priest, and I will admit, I... I put I did all my ratings this morning, whereas I had heard it a few times before. Uh, I rated KK's Priest uh, four point five overall. So yeah, uh, songs that I love on this album: Sons of the Sentinel, Strike mm -hmm. of the Viper. Even though it's only two and a half minutes, Reap the Whirlwind. I love Reap the Whirlwind. I gave that five out of five. Him, him sixty six. I love the fact that it's slower, more doomy, still has a great riff. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice drumming by Sean. Uh, that had a 4.75. So, yeah, that's basically what it is. You know, as Davey said, shorter, more to the point at 40 minutes. Uh, Ripper sounds fantastic. You know, people putting Ripper down. I mean, the guy's 56 and Rob is 72. And then, you know, in fact, I just answered somebody on Facebook like an hour or two ago that they were comparing uh, Ripper and, and Rob. And, you know, if you look at Rob these days, he moves around on this. I love the guy, followed him for a long time, but he looks like he, he moves around the stage like a slug. Uh, you know, one of those banthas that you see in, uh, in, in uh, what was that Disney uh, movie? The Mandalorian. Yeah. One of those band is moving around on the sand so slow, but uh, X, you know, Richie Faulkner does an amazing job, uh, you know, on guitar. He carries the, the team. Uh, you know, I really feel for Glenn because I have a grandmother who died of Parkinson's. And so I know what a, a debilitating disease it can be. The fact that he's still on the writing team, I think is phenomenal. And whatever he can give us is awesome. So, you know, chin up, Glenn. Keep keep it up. Uh, whereas the guitar work on uh, KK. So, Davey, I agree with everything you said about his sour grapes. And I basically kind of aired Ace Freely out a little bit about that a few weeks ago in that review. Where, you know, again, he's another one. You know, Paul Stanley can be a schmuck, too, and say some things. But... You know, don't feed into it. You know, you don't don't use your press that way, guys. J just do it honestly. Talk about your albums and, and let it be, let it be. Uh, otherwise, I'm very proud of KK that that he basically rose from the ashes and with these two great albums that that he put together. 
Uh, I'm very happy to see that he's sell, sold out a few, uh, you know, small theaters. Um, his his good. Oh, also. Uh, so. During this afternoon, again, while I was working, this is a bit of a no, no. I, I saw one of the priest, uh, one of the KK's priest concerts on YouTube. They, uh, I think they somebody recorded the one from Baltimore. So I watched that one. It was like a, an hour and 15 minutes. And you want to know something? Uh, kudos to, to, to his guitar playing. It, it, it's amazing. Uh, and he, the fact that he brought A.J. Mills along, because A.J. can, A.J. has the chops that, uh, that Glenn had and appears that K.K. doesn't have. So he does more of those intricate solos, like uh, on Beyond the Realms of Death. He killed it. I mean, he played it with feel, and he was like note for note with what Glenn played, the way he articulated it. So, you know, it, it's funny how it's ironic that KK was upset that Glenn took the lion's share of the leads. But meanwhile, he gave A.J. Mills some of these leads also that, that he felt he couldn't hit. But, but then he redeemed himself with his leads on Victim of Changes. So check it out if he, you know. If they don't take it down, you know, it, it was a great concert, but uh, I know I spoiled it for myself, but I don't care. I want to see it live Friday night anyway. So that, I'm seeing Judas Priest in June, so I'm kind of I'm looking forward to that. Oh, where's that? Uh, Tons of Rock is a music festival I go to every year. Uh, in, in Norway? Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. How far from where you live? Uh, an hour by plane. Plane, did you say? You yeah. Know? Oh, that sucks. Oh, wow. Well, I just have to cross two bridges to go to uh to to go to this concert on uh, Friday. The uh, yeah. yeah. So to get to New Jer Jersey, but uh, I guess it's easy to top two. I got a. I'm hoping they release a new album this year. Who's that? Cece Top. Oh, okay. All right. Very cool. Uh, here's a fun little activity that I saw somebody uh, do on uh, on Facebook earlier, and I'm going to ask you this question. So I'm going to go around the room. So if you had the choice of seeing Judas Priest with Tipton Downing and Ripper or Judas Priest with Halford, Richie, and Andy, which would you choose? John. Boy, um, I think I would... I mean, I mean, preference. I would like to. I never got to see. I've never gotten to see the band live. So, I wish I could see Halford Tipton Downing myself. But if I had to pick between the two, I guess mm -hmm. I would. I think I would rather go with Tipton Downing and Ripper. Okay. Just because, so just because I just want I I want to experience the KK Glenn lead trade offs. You know that that I right. of, of all of, from all the songs I've come to love so much, and that's the reason why. Okay, very. Yeah. That's cool, uh, Davy. It's a tough one, but I did see Judas Priest two or three times on the Painkiller tour hmm. around I'll that era, why, yeah. like thirty years ago. It's been a while since I've seen them, and I enjoyed the show. It was a great show. I met the guys backstage. Luckily enough, I got backstage through my record store connections. Nice. And actually, KK remembered me because I always had these little opera glasses from my grandmother that I hung around my neck. And he, <laughs> wow. and he remembered me through my little opera glasses that I used to take. To wow, concert. that's so that was very cool. So they were nice guys when I met them backstage. No attitudes, no rock star BS. They were cool guys. I'm just a huge fan of Halford's voice and the way he's still doing it. As you guys said, it's 72, 73, however old he is now. I'm going to have to go with Halford. Okay. And, for, and I'm, I neglected to say, although you guys mentioned that Richie Faulkner's guitar work on the new Priest album is excellent. Yeah. Even though your buddy Karen doesn't like it, Jack. And she yeah. said on your show, it's too much for her. But right. I think he's well, a great player. He he is a great player. There's no denying that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, and I don't think she had, I don't know if she had a problem with his playing as much as the, uh, the uh, basically, the, the production 
She said it sounded a little too noodly. I, I thought that's what she said. Well, yeah, she, she did. A lot of people asking that pepper for being too it's it's too smooth. Yeah, right. I don't mind that. I'm going with Halford. Okay, George. Definitely Team Halford. I mean, okay. to me, he's he's the most distinctive, best musician of that that group that you just mentioned. So okay, yeah. all right, Ove. Well, I have seen Halford and KK and uh, Tipton play on the Nostradamus tour. So I have to go with uh, with uh, Ripper Owens and uh, KK and and uh, and oh. Tipton. Right. I wish I could just uh, transport it all, all back to like 81 and, and uh, hear them play in 81. Jack's favorite album. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I didn't say before, so I picked KK over... Uh, priest and uh priest won three to two on that one basically what i and i wrote this down i want the album to rip my face off that's why i went with pre, uh kk is your man yes uh so anyway i'm gonna break the tie and i'm gonna say tipton kk and uh and uh what's his name uh ripper so yeah so they win that one all right but this was very, this was fun. I mean, it was very close all the way, all the way around. Uh, um, before we uh, depart, I'm going to ask everybody. So, John, what do you have going on on uh, my music corner? Well, on my music corner, you can see Jack on a couple episodes because I have, uh, me and my uh, co-captain, John the Music Nut, have been going through the catalog of Judas Priest. Uh we have Turbo coming out this week, so uh, that's that. Uh, and that was with um, uh, Mike Ladano from a from the Grab a Stack of Rock uh, okay. channel. So uh, definitely worth checking him out. Um, if anybody's Martin a Martin Popoff fan, I got to contribute to Pictures at Eleven. Uh, I think I show up in page one seventy six of this thing. So um, so that's uh, that would be. Kind of my two big things I can plug. Um, you can see me on Rock Daydream Nation once in a while. You can see me on uh, a couple of other various other channels, Bicycle Legs, Grants Rock Warehouse, and well, I haven't been on a contrarian show in a while, but uh, hopefully we'll get there soon. So, all right, very cool, Davey. What do you got going on? I have my before I talk about my channel for a moment. I just want to say when it comes to Turbo. It's all about one song for me, Out in the Cold. Nice. Alfred's vocals on that song, yeah. the melody lines, Out in the Cold has always been my favorite song from Turbo. And that's a great concert opener. Yeah. Excellent song. Yep. And John, your series is great. I've seen Thank all you. of them. I've commented on most of them. Yes, I've seen yeah. Jack on there. And I've also been following Ove and George on Jack's channel, so... I know everyone here, and it's great to do a panel show with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. My channel, thanks. My channel is very new. It's Cretan Classics. It's only been up on the web for about three or four months. But I do, as of when I did the video about three or four weeks ago, I have the only album ranking of the band Zebra on yes. the internet, on YouTube. I'm the only yes. one. No, I can't believe no one else ever did it before. And I reveal a lot of forthcoming knowledge about the band in the video. And even the band Zebra have commented on my video, which blew my mind. But, because I think I'm, I'm such a small channel and such small potatoes compared to everyone else, right. like the infamous Pete Pardo, your buddy Jack, your buddy George, and the Contrarians is a big channel. And I'm small potatoes, and Zebra commented on my video. So I that, thought that was very cool. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, Zebra is that the band in the 90s that had the album Yellow? Okay. No, this is the '80s rock band Zebra. You you might be thinking Zebra Head. There was a band Zebra Head. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I just remember it was Zebra Stripes on the on the cover, and it's called Yellow. I think the album is called, or it was a song, a single from an album called Yellow. I think. You back know, in the 90s. tell me what you want. That's probably their most favorite, uh, you know, their most famous song. That that Zebra. Davey is talking about. Yeah, from the oh, 80s. Okay. Although they're still around today. They've been around since the mid-70s. But, 
I think okay. I may have commented to you that a few years back, being another Long Islander, my wife and I went to a local park to see a Billy Joel cover band one summer, and Randy Jackson, guitarist of Z Zebra, he performed solo as their opening act. Just him and his 12-string guitar, and he he's did, great. He did an amazing version of the Rain song by Led Zeppelin, note for note. Mm. So, great uh, player and singer and songwriter, yeah. It's sad that the jerks behind me didn't appreciate it. They're like, oh, get off the stage already. I'm like, I turn around, I'm like, will you just zip it already and let and let the guy finish? Yeah. So that's that. George, what do you got going on, buddy? Um the April edition of Four Fusion Friday is gonna feature live albums. Um I'm kind of co-hosting Review Crew with Jamie. Uh, the next one we're going to do, uh, it's going to be uh, Rick Labonte and Scott Barry are going to be in on that one. We're going to be, it's an important show, we think, because we're focusing on only new music, basically, unless there's a, a newly released archival thing. But, uh, you know, tons of nostalgia type channels out there, but, you know, it doesn't doesn't get recycled unless there's new music to put in. So you got to keep talking about it music yep. but that's about it okay Ovi, you have anything going on i gotta correct myself the band is yellow and they have a song album called zebra okay <laughs> ah <All> yellow <right. laughs> okay there you go but mixed up no i'm just i'm on uh, on rock fantasy files every wednesday and uh, tomorrow we are doing an episode Again, and it's it's like albums from a year. The year is going to be a surprise, but we do like like we did last time. We did like your my favorite or five favorite albums from that year and honorable mentions, and just talk about that year in general. Like I think Pop Off did that back a few years. Like just having a tell about the Super Bowl and tell about what everything happened that year and just. Right. Take that year in into into music. All right, very cool. All right, so what do I have going on? So first of all, I want to wish everybody a happy St. Patty's Day. That's why I wore my uh, my my shirt. Uh, my son got me this because we both watch uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia together, and then that show is freaking hilarious. And so he he. He was testing me to see if I knew what this meant, and of course I did. But So uh, I marched in a parade on Sunday. I'm going to march in another one Saturday. Uh, having been to Ireland back in September, I could say I just love Irish culture now. So there are a lot of nice videos on your channel from that trip. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, showing home movies right on YouTube. That's how I showed my, my parents last week. There's a little Led let Zeppelin treat on it, too. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, what else do I have going on? So I have this new series uh, reviewing the reviewer. You might mm -hmm. see something like that. Uh, top metal albums of uh, of the year 2017 I'm working on. I've had Ove and I've had George on in the past. Uh, there's always a, you know, might have I might try to get more guests for you know, to finish out the series, I have another new series that's brewing that I, you know, I'm just going to keep it quiet for now. But another thing that I, I literally just thought of. So when we were coming home from Florida, because that car play was so damn bad, I and my wife gave me another good idea. Why don't you use one of your uh, your earbuds to, to listen to your music while you drive? So I did that. And uh I listened to one of my dream set lists that I that I put together as as one of my uh, uh, one of my uh, my song lists. So uh, so so I'm thinking, why don't I bring back Pete? So one once upon a time, a few years back, Pete did a month where he did dream set lists. Uh, what I'm thinking of doing is I'd like to bring that back, but maybe for the month of April and just like. Five or, five or six weeks and and then be done with it and pick a few bands that Pete did not pick and maybe one or two of them just do a revitalization of 
of old um, set lists that I had done and basically just redo them. So that's an idea and you might be seeing that pop up in the near future. Uh, of course, I gotta get Pete's permission to do that, but I'm sure he won't have a problem. Uh, other thing, as I mentioned, I'm going to see KK Friday night. Uh, there might be a, uh, um, whatchamacallit, we, we might do a show to review the concert together. Could be on mine, could be on Sea of Tranquility, we'll see. Uh, it doesn't matter, as long as, you know, we're all on together. We're all good buds. Uh, do you have any Seinfeld episodes brewing? Uh, no, but I, I'm, I might have some Curb Your Enthusiasm uh, episodes. And Dave, that was a really good call out. That, that was as funny as shit when you mentioned yeah. that. So basically what it is, is so there was a, a season, might have been season 10 or 11, where this guy had this coffee store. So to just to spite him, he, Larry opens a coffee, another coffee shop right next door, and he tries to do everything to screw this guy. It was the funniest thing. And I, I can't even, yeah. Uh, and the funniest thing is he he has a bathroom where people are not allowed to go in there and take a shit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He's he he's that quirky, that that funny. But uh, my last two things I'm going to plug, and I don't know how soon I'm going to get to these. I have been promising Ove that I'm going to listen to a band called Avatarium, and we're going to talk about them. Uh, I am that's still foremost in my thoughts. And Davey, uh, Shadow Gallery. I've been listening to them, and uh, we have to get together and uh, yes. and do that as well. And I'm I'm more than willing to come on your channel to do it. You know. We'll, okay. We're ready. Sounds cool. Yeah. We'll but, set a date. Yeah, I I've listened to about half their catalog, and I am loving it. Really, really good. Great stuff. Great band. Hey, George, are you a fan? I haven't heard a lot, not since uh, back in the day, in the 90s. But, okay, I think they only have six records or so. Yeah. But, One guy passed, right? Yes, yeah. the singer Mike Baker, he was great. What a voice. Yeah. Died too young. In his 40s, I think, 46 or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very sad, but but we still have his music. and uh, Exactly. Uh, I listened to it a few times going upstate. It just blew me away. I loved it immediately. What kind of genre is it? It's pro. It's prog metal. Oh, okay. A little softer prog metal. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like Symphony X. Softer. Yeah. Which ironically, yeah. it looks like I'm going to see them uh, right here on Long Island in early June, and uh, I'm trying to convince Dave to join me. So I asked for the day off. I just haven't heard yet. So all right. Okay. Keep keep needling needling them. I will. Okay. But all right. So unless anybody has anything else to say, I'm gonna bid everybody good night. Happy watching. Thank you for joining us. I absolutely love this. This was a wonderful crew tonight. And I, I would love for us to get together again for something in the mm -hmm. future. So sure. Definitely. Keep you all in mind. So thank you so much. Uh, Thanks for having us and enjoy the show Friday. That's right. Oh, thank you. I will. And and I'm going to enjoy uh, the pizza place that Pete picked out for us, which is, uh, he says, is really good. So, yeah. Uh, you know, that's going to be fun. So uh, Rich Catino will be there. Pete and his brother, uh, Rich Pardo, will be there. And Craig Kaminsky coming in from uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania to join us. So, nice. yeah, that'll be really cool. So. Is Allo coming? Have we heard anything from Allo? No, Allo can't make it. He's, uh, he's oh. gonna, yeah, but but you know what? Allo goes to so many shows, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But I may run into him at the uh, Albany Priest show, but we'll see. But um, I'm, uh, I'd actually would prefer to go to Saxon and Uri Heap, and you know, before I go to Priest, because I I've seen Priest so many times, and I've only seen Uri Heap once, and that let their last album really blew me away. So, but anyway, okay, that's it. Have a good night, everybody. See you all soon. Bye bye. Bye.